when you look at old fishing tackle, especially the old trout flywheels, you realise how far we've come with modern technology, modern materials and everything, but you still need some techniques about catching those trout. One of the ways you can catch them is by looking for movement of water. Now, we've all seen the trout rise, or most of us have if you're fishermen, where you see the circular ring, but it doesn't always work like that. There can be fish just inches underneath the surface. If there is a ripple or a flat spot and they're moving, taking, let's say, nymphs that are just emerging, ready to fly off underneath the surface, not on the surface, just underneath, they can dis displace an area of water. And that's what we call pushing water. It comes from a term bone fishing, where you'd be fishing for bone fishing six inches of water. The fish's body obviously displaces some of that if it's a five or six inch deep fish. It's displacing some of that. It, it throws on a ripple on the ocean a little baby sort of V, little wake. And that's what you're looking for with trout as well. Let's get down to one of the fisheries. Not using this gear, I hate to add. And see if we can't show you a little bit about pushing water trout. It's a tip. Look, if you're there fishing anyway, of course you can catch them fishing blind. But if you learn to recognise pushing or moving water as disturbed by a fish, hey guys, put that fly straight in their face. It can obviously pay dividends. So even on a calm, still day like this, you're going to get bits and pieces blowing in on the water and that's going to draw fish to the surface. Now, if you just look how flat this is, just look for any form of movement. Anything at all. That's all it, there on the right, I saw a fish's fin come up. I see another few bubbles there. And over on the right, obviously a splashy tape from a trout and one mid left. It's trying, and another movement there. Now, some of these are taken off the surface and some are taken just below the surface and it's below the surface where you get that pushing water. That's what we were talking about. Just looking for that little something that gives you an indication that there is a trout there. Just pushing water, making that ripple, disturbing the surface as he goes to take what I would call sub-emerging, just below the surface. A nymph or a fly about to hatch. I'm being slightly coloured. I had black fly with a red tag, a little gold bead head. Didn't like it and I remember that many years ago I did well with orange in coloured water. So I'll show you the little nymph I'm using, a little gold head. Uh, size 12 here, I'll get the fish in of course. That's within five minutes and that's just waiting, just waiting, not fishing, just waiting till I've seen something. Really good scrapper, not a, mon not a monster fish, a couple of pounds, but very, very good scrapper. Because here at Frencham it's ideal, it's cold, the water's cool, it's damp even on a hot summer's day like today. Oh the fly comes out, who cares, it's catch and release anyway. I'm sure, like a number nine bus, there'll be another one along in a minute. Well guys, I did make that statement about the bus coming along. <laughs> it's just come along. A real jumper, I don't know if you're going to see any jumps here. Good thing. And that one was 
exactly the same cast, the same area where I've seen that ripple movement. Same fly, and I forgot to show it to you last time. It's a better fish this one too. I'm in stealth mode here, as you notice, I've taken the cogs off the ratchet of the reel. It's nice and quiet. That way you don't get other anglers bothering you because they don't have the ratchet going all the time. It's catch and release, so you can catch and release and nobody even knows you've had a fish, bar the odd splash. Nice rainbow. Well now this is catch and release. So I'm just going to take the fly out in the water. There we go. Keep the fish in the water all the time. Let me show you there, that's the fly. Gold head. A little bit of orange thorax there. And fairly sort of bland at the back. Let me show you this fish. Don't forget, I'm putting him in back, so it's pretty frisky. Oh, beautiful, beautiful people. Just look at that, very briefly, very briefly. Two and a half pounds of leaping, jumping, and going back in the lake trout. Now, all I have to do is go and look for some more of those pushing water, subsurface ripple movements. That's about the best piece of advice I've ever given myself, folks. <laughs> Make sure you cast exactly where you see those pushing water shapes. I saw some ripples. Within a minute of pulling through there, boom. Took me right in close. Always watch your back cast, especially when there's a lot of trees, bushes or overhangs. If you see, I try and target that back cast going in between and away from any snagging trees, overhead branches, anything like that. Because I want to get straight to that area where I've seen the fish moving. Place the fly in the general area. Now you've got no way of knowing whether it's going right, left, sideways, obviously not. But there's no question that it's a method if you can learn to, it's basically, let's face it guys, it's watercraft. It's only something that years on the water will teach you to look for. And the more times you cast at an area where a fish is moving in, the more chance you're gonna have of getting your fly intercepted. On a ripply day, far more hard to see pushing water. You're looking for a disturbance or a break in the uniformity or pattern of those ripples. But by watching, learning, and adapting and putting your fly in the general area you can come up with some fantastic trout like this. Getting harder to 